Welcome back to Mob Pop Sports. This is Grandy. Uh, if this is your first time here, welcome. Appreciate you guys checking out the channel, checking out this video. If you're returning, once again, uh, truly appreciate you guys checking uh, this channel back out, I guess, coming back. I don't know, some stuff, something like that, guys. So uh, other than that, man, hey, uh, quick shout out to all you guys. Hey, I just want to say uh, we're almost at that thousand subscriber mark. That's super cool. My daughter was just telling me about that. So super excited about that. So uh, keep sharing. Let anybody know who wants to check out this channel. Uh, if you're first time here, if you're just wondering what this is all about, it's just kind of my journey of selling sports cards for a living and just kind of things that I'm learning, things that I, uh, you guys are just taking this journey with me about sports cards, the whole industry since I've started this collecting uh, 30, 40 plus years ago and then just kind of dive into the, doing this full time. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this journey. Hopefully you guys are learning a few things from me here and there. So that's the, that's the whole point of this channel. And then also I want you guys to comment and help me get better in regards to selling sports cards for a living and just collecting all that good stuff so other than that happy monday hopefully everybody's having a good monday uh i'm rising grind obviously this weekend uh once again uh, a lot of a lot of good orders this past weekend so i gotta get all these shipments out so just kind of packaging stuff this morning and just kind of getting back to listing all the uh the pickups that i pick up or from mail day the other day so i gotta list that all week long so it's gonna be it's gonna be a busy week for myself so which is a good thing uh other than that this video, I, just, I definitely want to talk about uh, things, whether I wish I knew or I did know, or I'm just learning as I'm, you know, when it comes to buying sports cards, when it comes to selling sports cards. So these are just kind of things that I've, I, I've picked up or learned about, and, and hopefully I can help somebody uh, if you don't know about this. So first things first, let's go with number one is that when you're buying singles, when you're buying slabs, what I, I definitely come to realize is that, um, cause I, I, I normally buy lots, if you guys are wondering. So I don't really buy singles unless they're PCs. So uh, my personal collections, when I buy singles, and if, if you're thinking you're gonna flip it or whatever, I mean, I, I would think again. So this is the thing what I've, I definitely noticed is that when I'm buying slabs, singles for any, any reason at all, 80% of the time I, I've come to notice, at least in my experience, is that they're at their highest value. Um, if you're thinking of buying a single that you're gonna flip for profit or whatever the case may be, if you're you're buying at unless you're you know you can get it under comps, obviously. Um, but most of the time, if you're buying around comps or whatever the case may be. I would say about 75 to 80 percent of the time they're at their highest or at least i with my mindset they're at their highest valued moment uh there might there obviously there are going to be chances uh, you know a certain player or whatever they can or a team could win a championship it, it could change and the value could go up i wouldn't bank on it uh this is the thing especially when you're, like i just said if you're buying high-end slabs or whatever the case may be most of the time time they're already at their peak um and i wish well i wouldn't wish i i just go in knowing that uh if you go in with that mindset you'll be better off um thinking that whatever you buy slab or single they're at their highest value so you don't have high expectation of selling it for a huge amount of money now some people will be like well how the hell are you gonna you know make some money blah 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 i go you know just going into that and thinking that I'm okay with that. So that's why when I tell you guys I buy lots, I don't buy singles unless it's a PC that uh, if I know that it's a PC, I don't really care if it's at the high end because it's something I'm keeping. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really investing in it. It's just something I like and, and I appreciate uh, the card or whatever the case may be or the player. So if you go into thinking that, you should be okay. Now, and that's why I, I tell everybody, um, selling sports cards is a living, I buy lots and I try to buy them as far under comps as I possibly can. Um, so that way it gives me enough room to be able to make this as a living, guys. So that, that's the biggest thing on that is to know selling sports cards is, is, and we're buying sports cards, make sure you understand that you're buying most likely at, at the high end. So just FYI on that. Now, Another thing that I've also felt like uh, I've learned is that when you're selling sports cards, 
it's not as easy as people make it seem. So I, I kind of knew this, but really when you're doing this full time and doing this as a living, you truly understand that um, it's very difficult to just sell sports cars. You, you don't just buy cars and just flip them um, easily. It happens. Don't get me wrong. There's times when I bought cards or I bought a lot that I instantly listed, instantly sold. Don't get me wrong. That happens. And it happens, you know, more often than not sometimes. But don't expect that. And that was my thing was, uh, you know, I was doing this as a side hustle, obviously, before I jumped into this full time. Uh, but every time I listed, you know, you know, hot items or whatever, hot cards, hot players, you know, they would sell pretty easily. It doesn't always work that way. And this is the thing is that sometimes when you buy a car, you're like, why is it not selling? It's just because cars don't always sell that easily, guys. It doesn't work that way. It, it truly doesn't. Um, you have to go into that with that mindset that if you list it, whether it's on eBay or even if you at a show, if you have um, all these cars, if you're a dealer and, and you're like, why? this is a great car why is nobody buying this uh whatever case may be it could be this patrick mahomes or or this michael jordan card or uh you know the hot and up and comer cj stroud why is it not selling i see people else selling it on see this is the thing we see it whether it's on youtube or on ebay previous comps or whatever it's selling at this price why is nobody buying it at this price it doesn't work that way guys you have to find the right buyer at the right situation or somebody who's wanting that car that's the one thing that that's why it always comes down to your car is only worth whatever somebody's willing to pay for it um and that's what i had to and, and that's why when i'm doing this as a living it's it's a numbers game so the more you list the more you sell the more uh the more inventory you have the more opportunities you have to sell cards because like i just said not every single car is going to sell instantaneously it may take a month it may take two months if you go look at some of these cars the comps you don't see comps every day like some of these sales you don't see like certain comps sell like 50 a day and there's a reason why is because it's, it's not that easy some of these comps if you look at certain cards go look at them you'll see maybe a sale a day two sales a day or a sale a week or a sale a month and that's the thing what people have to realize is that some of these cars don't sell it doesn't flip instantaneously and that's what i'm learning is that certain cars you buy yes victor wimbyama is hot right now people want to buy his car but not every single one of his cars is going to sell instantly you list it or instantly you show it at a show that somebody's going to buy you have to find somebody who wants to buy a, a victor wimbyama car at your price and that specific car at that grade or a raw car that's what people don't realize is that it could take some time it could take um you know the right person at the right price and that's what people have to realize and that's what i i definitely realized is that okay that you know i slowly figured like before i really did this full time and jumped into is that i have to get my scaled up of listings and whether I'm doing shows, whether I'm doing online and everything, it's all about inventory, it's all about numbers. Um, and and like I said, realizing that just because I have a hundred amazing cards, you can have a hundred of the best cards, PCs, and you think they're gonna sell instantly, they don't. Might be able to sell one, might be able to sell two or three or four, whatever, you're not gonna sell all hundred of those cards maybe 95 percent of those cards may take months to sell like i just said you have to find the right person the right price the right situation uh to sell those cards like i said go look at any cards right now you can go look at any card go look at all the comps you're not going to see 50 to 100 sales on a daily basis of that specific card like i just said you might see one every other week one every other month or something like that and that's how it works guys you have to um you have to understand that you're not just going to sell it instantaneous. Even if this is the crazy thing, even if you sell it at a at, at a under comp, so you're thinking like, oh, I can I can sell just because the last card sold at hundred dollars, I might be able to sell this one at seventy five dollars. Doesn't work that way. You still have to find somebody who wants that specific player and that specific card at seventy five bucks. It's just it's that's just the way it goes. So I, that's something that I, I definitely learned, and you have to be patient. 
Uh, I think I said this in, in several videos before, selling sports cards and buying sports cards, you have to be patient on both ends. And when I say that, why I say both ends, because um, like I just said or previously, you're not gonna sell that card instantaneous at your you know profitable margin or whatever the case may be. Um, because like I just said, you have to be patient. Number two, you have to be patient when you're buying stuff too. It's okay to you know walk away from deals if it doesn't make sense to you and your 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 bank account it doesn't make sense to you as even if it's a pc this is the thing there's going to be tons of those cards available to purchase sooner or later you have to find the right price you have to find the right everything situation and it's okay to be patient whether you're buying a single whether you're buying a lot um i've learned to to be patient uh, I've learned not to be so, um, what's that word? And you just jump, uh, FOMO, fear of missing out. Uh, I learned not to, to have that fear of missing out uh, because a specific player is going up, whatever the case may be, just be patient, whether you're buying stuff, whether you're selling stuff. That's the biggest thing in, in sports cards. Um, I highly recommend that, you know, people know is that just be patient. Don't be in a rush. Uh, a lot of kids, I, I don't think, I, I don't know how many kids watch this channel because you guys are probably bored as hell within a two minutes into this video of this guy just talking, me just talking. But I wish the kids knew a little bit more is to be patient. Selling and buying because I've seen kids um, and this is, you know, I, I wouldn't say dealers take advantage of them a little bit, but I've seen kids go to shows and they have a hundred dollar card and, you know, they, they, they want to sell it for whatever the case may be, because they want to get the cash and they might sell it, you know, a dealer be like, well, best I could do is I'll, I'll give you $40 or $50 uh, on the car because, you know, I need room, blah, blah, blah. And I understand that too. Uh, but the kid, you know, it's just like, okay. And you can see it in their face that they know it's like a, a more valuable card than that. Uh, but they're impatient because they want to get that money and that cash flow. But if if they could be a little bit more patient, they could probably find someone who would pay seventy dollars or eighty dollars for that card and, and get a little bit more value uh, for you know their their card and and understand what they have. Uh, same thing with buying. I can see kids sometimes they're mom, mom, dad, dad. I want this you know player. I want that card. Um, and they pay and, you know, they could literally go down the aisle or go on eBay and possibly get that car for a little bit of a better deal. So that's the thing about the next generation of, of collectors or uh, dealers or buyers or sellers, all that. I wish, um, you know, they'd just be a little bit more patient. And, and, and I'm not saying wait forever till it's the rock bottom price, but I'd just be just like I said, don't have that impatientness of, of trying to buy or sell the card instantly so um so that's that's the one thing i, I you know i wish little kids would learn a little bit more it's just patience uh that's the biggest thing buying and selling so just just remember on that uh another thing i think in the the hobby of buying sports card and selling is that knowingly it's a cool thing this is super cool is that when you buy uh when, when the plan works out so i i, I really like that uh, when I say that, it's like when you buy certain players, certain cars, certain lots, um, anticipating that they're going to go up in value, anticipating uh, that even if you're not flipping, this is the thing too. If you buy and you thinking that this car, this player is a stock that you want to uh, buy into and they go up. So when the plan works out, when, when you do, whether you do research or it's just, you know, plain luck. Uh, you buy specific cars and you know that they're going to go up. Um, for instance, for instance, uh, Caitlin Clark, I'm a huge Iowa Hawkeye fan and go look at her cards right now, her autograph, all that. I can't even get an autograph from my daughter. We've been trying, but, um, you know, my daughter and I have been a big fan of her since, you know, being from Iowa and everything and just seeing her grow when her freshman year, you know, sophomore year, all that stuff. But we got on her card early when she first, you know, her first cards were coming out on that Sports Illustrated one or that Bowman University Bowman Crow cards. Um, we were able to get a few of her cards back then and just kind of see what the value is now. And it worked, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a seeing your, 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 I guess your, your plan and, and your train of thought work. So that's the cool thing. That's the fun thing. And I want people to understand when you, when you're in 
to to buy sports card whether it's collecting flipping whatever you're looking to do um it's really cool and fun to see it work out now don't get me wrong there's times when you buy a hundred dollar card and that shit drops aka mac jones aka zach wilson aka even justin fields AKA all those guys if you got you go look at their cards when they first came out uh anticipating you know people spending a you know a bunch of money on them and how much they've tanked um keep in mind there's also the other side when you when you buy these cards uh, they go up and that's a cool thing that's a fun thing and that's what makes i think in my eyes it makes it fun to me because when you're like yeah you know i bought this card i bought this player knowingly or thinking that they're gonna go up whether it's value wise of their card or just uh just to see the player do well and then just to see while their player do well just to see their cards increase in value uh whether you're flipping it or not so that's a cool thing and, and keep it fun um that's one thing i've learned it is to to make it a game um in a sense in that in that way for me is myself is the, to make it fun so it's not such a drag um selling sports cards for a living is that i do make it a game i look for players or or, or um you know specific niches of of sports cards to purchase to see if i can uh be right if i can you know uh buy the card at low and hopefully it increases it's kind of cool it's like winning it's winning that's what it is guys at the end of the day it's winning so make it fun um that's why i don't go super high in because number one i can't take that risk um like i said doing this for trying to make this as a living is that i can't buy uh, a five thousand dollar card hoping i can sell it for even six thousand and make a thousand dollar profit i i can't do that risk because if i buy a five thousand dollar card as you guys all know it could literally drop to 2500 and i am shit out of luck and i have to explain that to my wife what's going on right so i don't have the mortgage the house because i'm buying sports cards and i'm failing in that sense versus um, buying bigger lots at, you know, not, not crazy lots, but mid end lots and buying them under comps. And hopefully um, I can flip them for a little bit of profit here and there. And then I can buy some PCs. So that's the way it goes, guys. So there you guys go. I know I kind of rambled on, but those are just little things that I've kind of learned a little bit, uh, whether selling sports cards, buying sports cards. Um, I hope somebody can pick something up a little bit if it can help you out or just refreshes your memory refreshes your mind i guess you could say in this industry uh or you know in this hobby of collecting that it can refresh you like hey this should be fun if you're just doing this for fun or if you're looking to do this for a little bit of money flip hopefully you can kind of you know gain some ideas and hope i can help you guys a little bit because these are the things that i'm learning and just kind of reiterating to myself on a daily basis so there you guys go uh other than that Hopefully you guys enjoy this. If you guys do like this kind of stuff, feel free to subscribe. Um, I always tell you, if you have not subscribed and there's plenty of them that watch these videos that haven't subscribed, all good. I still appreciate you guys watching the video all the way through this point. Um, and don't forget, help me out. Check out the eBay store. I put the links in the description. Feel free to make any offers. Uh, all my cards are up for offer. So make sure you guys make an offer and I will obviously respond to you as soon as I can on that. So other than that, man, let's go have a good week, guys. Happy Monday to everybody. Till next time.